Hey, I'm here with uh, Charlie the Dream. Anderson, how you doing, man? Good, man. Woo! Excited. Do you, can you clip that so we don't lose Let's it? Let's clip her. So we're talking about creating sales momentum, and I asked Charlie what's something that he feels like would be useful to other uh, newer roofing companies that they're working on right now. And it sounds like creating sales momentum is one of those things. How do you instigate this? So the way, the way that we instigated at DreamWorks, at least, is we celebrate everything. We celebrate every win, whether it's an $800 win, an $8,000 win, an $80,000 win. Somebody sells a job, we have this giant group text in our company, and we just go electric. Every single person fires in and says, congratulations, way to go, man, you're doing great. And you see one come in, and then you see two come in. And you might see a third one come in, and you can literally feel the electricity in a room. One of our guys was telling, telling me earlier, he's a brand new guy, he's been with us for about three weeks now. He's like, do you feel that? Do you feel this like electricity? And he's going out to a sale, and he's going to sell a hundred times better than what he would normally would, right? He's going to have that energy behind him. And, uh, dude, it's, it's just it's everything. Sales momentum, once you start it, it's like a tidal wave, right? It just keeps building and building and building. And we do everything we can to keep that up. What know? specific things do you do? Because it sounds like you celebrate the wins. Yeah. You celebrate the wins. I think that's really important. Like, we bang a gong. Yep. We put a GIF in our Slack. Yeah. We do whatever, it, you know, we might pop a, some champagne at the end of a good day. Mm -hmm. You know, that kind of thing. Is there anything that you guys, like, specifically do as a team to kind of, like, celebrate? Specifically that we yeah. do as a team? Yeah. Um, we don't have anything specific that we do. I mean, if if we're gonna stay on that, I used to do the air horn. Yeah, Dude, I'm just saying, there's like That's little, awesome. there's little rituals. Like, uh, I'm, they're trying to Pavlov's dog. My there team. should be like the, uh, you know, you go to an yeah. Arby's and they have the, they have the little bell at the door. You just yeah. bang, hit that little bell. Um, no, but I actually love that idea. It's, but it's just a matter of the togetherness. You yeah. know, that that. Because you guys have a group thread, is, or is it text? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Group, it's a group text. So yeah. it's right there. We have emojis that stand for every little thing that we do. Yeah. Right. We have a reju emoji. We got a gutter emoji. We got a roof emoji. Uh, contingency insurance approved. Like everyone has that thing. So you, as soon as and, and I know it's the the Pavlov's, Pavlov's dog thing. As soon as I hear that group chat go off, and I know everybody here does it, we all immediately run out our phones because we want to see what that other person did. Yeah. Um, so I saw somebody sold something today and everyone was stoked and yeah. around the table and getting Seriously. excited. Yeah. yeah. We just, we just, we celebrate each other like relentlessly, you know, yeah. because so you're, you're going to have down times, right? You're going to have times where two weeks go by and you don't sell a damn thing or, you know, you're like, it hasn't rained in three weeks and where's, where's the leads? Like you're going to have these down times and that momentum will also help to carry you through the down times because they're going to happen. You know? Yeah. And so that goes to say, like when we're having down times, um, you know, what, how do you not let the mojo go out of the room? You know what I mean? Like, I mean, I, yeah, we've all had them, right? Yeah. So what do you do to kind of create a, I don't know, like to, to not get mo negative momentum? Cause I, we're talking about positive sales momentum. Yeah. How do you kind of avoid that negative momentum. I mean, I, I think you put the creativity into the room yeah. and you get everybody involved in creating solutions versus creating gossip kind of thing. Mm. Right. Um, so I think if you, I know like like most recently where we were having this weird down slump, we all got together to brainstorm ideas. It wasn't like everybody, in, you know, looking at us like, Hey management, what are you going to do about it? It's, what can we all do to help solve a problem? How can we all work together? What can we do that's different? Because I, I, I don't have all the answers. I don't, I never, I don't claim to, never will. Um, but our guys have a ton of good ideas. So mm -hmm. those guys, you know, they, they, they have a place where they feel like they can use their voice. And it's amazing. You know, I think you just put the creativity out and let it come back to you. I see you guys doing a lot of stuff on social media. You've ramped it up recently. Yes. Maybe that's because of some of that dry spell. So yeah. you're like, what do we do? Um, but there's a lot of they ask you answer principles that I see that you guys are doing. And I, uh, you guys are big fans of Marcus Sheridan. It mm -hmm. feels like you're at Jurassic's because you guys did something kind of provocative recently for a roofing company. You said, here's why we use subcontractors. Yeah. And I remember proposing that piece of content to another roofer I worked with. And they said, absolutely not. Even though we have our reasons, we don't want to put that out there. Mm -hmm. And so I think they ask you answers sometimes has a little bit of like a, 
a scary boldness to it. For sure. What made what made you guys d- decide to make that piece of content, even though it's a little scary to talk talk about that? <sighs> I mean, it's because it's one of the. It's going to come up. It's going to come up, right? Whenever you're sitting at a customer's table, or when the day of the job starts, and a bunch of guys show up that aren't necessarily in DreamWorks shirts, or they're they're you know, it's you can't sweep it under the rug. People are going to find out eventually. And every other contractor that's working, at least in my market, they're all using subcontractors too, but no, everyone's afraid to talk about it. So, you know, the way that we see it is roofing's competitive and you got to, if, if you're not going to be, if you're not going to stand out somehow, then you're just going to, you're, you're just going to be fighting against a cheaper price or fighting against, you know, uh, a cheaper, com- you know, a competitor. Isn't it weird so how just being honest about stuff sometimes feels like, you're be, like it's very bold to yeah. just be straight up well, sometimes, and, and 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 especially something like roofing, man. People don't like homeowners don't understand roofing, and they don't know the parts and the pieces, and it's a super expensive uh, purchase. So in my mind, the way I we we say we want to sell the way that we want to be sold, and if I'm getting sold, I don't know if I can swear on here, but don't you can don't bullshit me. Yeah, I don't like being bullshit. Just give it to me straight. Tell me tell me what you're gonna do, how you're gonna do it. And if it's one of those, th- like people will tell, can tell if you're bullshitting. So why bullshit them? Just talk about it. Because if they have a problem with it, at least you got that problem out of the way up front, and now you know that customer's not the one for you. We've had it before where someone had a, took an issue with our the ethnicity of our con- of our subcontractors, and we simply said, okay, then I guess we're not the contractor for you. Right? Yeah. I mean, and there's a boldness to sticking by your ethics, and. The way you, you know, and that's what adds yeah. to the, that's what adds to the team. And that's what, you know, um, one of our Spanish speaking guys, Jose actually said to us, this was just like three weeks ago. We had to walk away from a job because the guy didn't like Spanish speaking people. And Jose got wind of that and came to us and said, Hey, we, I like, just so you know, I really appreciate that, that you guys stood by your morals and walked away from, you know, 12 or $15,000, whatever it was, but on your standards. And that's, that's that momentum. That's that electricity, mm, right? I just felt electricity. I literally just got the chills. You talking about that? Yeah. So I think that that's incredibly beautiful. And like I, you know, I have examples of longtime team members that like, well, a client did something weird. Yeah. And I decided, all right, even though that's a large account, I'm letting. And it was to a woman on yeah. the team, you know, like. And I think like people remember that. People remember, especially when you take, you throw, you take money and you put it away like just because you didn't feel like something was right yeah your team definitely remembers i can imagine your team cares about yeah i mean you know if you if you if your morals can be bought then you got you got problems larger than than money you know what i mean like stand by your morals if you have a good why in business stand by it you know what's up moses yeah, Moses on here. I tagged him, so he's, he's probably like, uh, "I got to figure out if I have to untag myself." From this. <laughs> um, let walk me up to the office, though. Let's, sure. let's do a little mini. Let's have, uh, let's, let's have a look. Here. We got the, some the trucks back here. We got the rejuve, the rejuve wagon. You got uh, tear off stuff. You got trailers. You got dumps. Tell uh, guys, tell. Hopefully, oh, actually, they may have locked us out of here. I think I muted it for a second there. Sorry, everyone. They may have locked us out of here. Sorry, Brian. I'm, I'm back. Oh, we're good. All right, so here's this is, the mini tour. This is where the dream happens. This is it. These are, this is secret these are branded right this. here, these oranges. A branded orange pack. Yeah. <laughs> Anything orange really ends up being branded at that point. Yeah. Big orange wall. We got goals. I won't orange zoom chairs. in on those. We got teamwork. Makes the dream works. Orange, orange monsters, courtesy. Yes. Monster is the worst energy drink on earth, but I drink it just because you <laughs> brought them to us. Yeah, we got the uh, the orange chairs. 
This is, it looked like this is the administrative person or the uh, inside sales or something like that. Uh, Stevie's our admin. She's the brains of the operation. Admin, and we got sales, sales desk. Sales over here, general meeting space. We got the beautiful logo Lunch. up front here on the door. All the traffic driving by looking at our sign. Yeah, I like, I like how much traffic there is. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I just think, let's go up front for one second. Yeah, yeah, let's go. I just really feel like there should be... Just to give everyone the front visual. So this is this chat this road looks pretty busy. And then like what if in addition to these gorgeous trucks, this gorgeous van, that thing is uh uh that thing is bright, dude. I think you should do more of vans. Yeah. And then this this roof being orange and the it being like a stark black or something like that. So that's I'm that's, with Dan, Dan Calbrace, if you're watching this, let us paint the roof orange. Yeah, and then <laughs> I feel like you could even do like a billboard right there, like a big billboard yeah. up top. Dude, we'd, we'd, Trim we'd make it. back these trees a little bit. So we're going get... to make it happen. Whenever we take control of this building and create the DreamWorks HQ. But I love this building, though. I just think it's a unique looking building. It's got a good shape. Yeah. I like your guys' office. The energy was in there. It was good in there today. The signs up front. That's what we do, man. We try to have good energy. We try to we try to make it fun. I feel like, and you got the the wall stuff, which I also think like there's a culture to the like swag and yeah. wall stuff is culture. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? I don't know what else we can do. <laughs> what yeah. else are we supposed to do to create? <laughs> I mean, uh, even something like 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 we it's a small office, so yeah. we put these whiteboards up. Like if you go into my office, it's a giant it's a giant whiteboard. Yeah. Right. That's nice. We hang up crazy art. We I like I actually really like this art. Yeah. Dude. This is dope. You know what I mean? Like we do we do whatever we can to like bring your personality here. But like so, even something like this. Is this your office? Yeah. This is nice. Um, uh, I like the uh I like the podcast station. Champions here. of Small Business Podcast. Champions of Small Business. Can you give a little bit of like what you're going after with this? Champions of Small Business Podcast. Yeah. What are you is, doing? Um, the whole point of it is to get real about business and to get real about what it takes to start a business, what it takes to continually run a business, how you can make it better, what are some of the things that you're struggling with right now. Let's work them out. Let's talk about them. And let's champion this thing that we call small business because... I mean, you know, we all, as business owners, have a unique experience that not, not And you're going for have. mostly the area, right? Like Harrisburg, yes. Mechanicsburg? Yep, because I'm trying to get this. super smart referrals. I, I mean... I'll be real. My podcast strategy is all about referrals, bro. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, the other incidental visibility that we get yeah. is good. Yeah. But I'm all about referrals, dude. I mean, if we get referrals from it, it's a cherry on top for yeah. me. My main goal is if I spread positivity and I spread goodwill to my other fellow business owners, it's going to come back to me in one form or another, whether that's that person using me, whether it's a referral, whether it's just a general getting someone else to support a small business in the area. You know what I mean? I, I think our, our worlds are getting so large and commoditized and impersonal that's if you can if you can bring back your local community a little bit, it's only gonna help you and help everyone around you. Oh, absolutely. You know what I mean? Um, so that's my whole point to it. Whole point to the podcast. One hundred percent. Yeah. Well, so I just think that that's a strategy a lot of people could use. Let me see if I can get this thing to work the way I want it to. <laughs> um, there you go. A lot of people can use because I feel like I should have gone the other way with that then. And then I now you're done. holding your hand all like awkwardly. One second, guys. I, I just feel like because a lot of people don't realize how much, well, so I'm saying I want referrals from this mm -hmm. when I do it on my podcast. And I think also like, Hey, could I get this person a couple pieces of business? Like that's the way I think. Same. I, I think in the, okay, it's from Matt Danskin, mm -hmm. restoration referral system. He says, if you get a insurance agent to referral, like closed deals mm -hmm. a year, you're above everybody else in their Rolodex. I'm sure. Because that's a big deal. So I just think the same way. Like when I have people on my podcast, I'm like, if I could get them two yeah. customers, yep. like that would be my mindset. And then, yeah. 
I mean, they they might want to give me referrals yeah. too if that's the case. And yeah. to, to bring it back to like the local business thing, I mean, I and not to hijack this whole thing and make it about my podcast, but no, I like it. I I sat down and did the numbers one day about how many people in my in my geographical area are of the age to make a buying decision, and what's the average amount that somebody spends at a at a small business per transaction. And I took those numbers and I ran them, and if each person in my area that's above the age of eighteen or seventeen that can make a buying decision. If they just spent fifty dollars per month at a small business, every person in the area, it would pump four hundred million dollars into our local economy. Hmm. Four hundred million dollars is what it would pump into our economy, because sixty percent of if, if you transact with a local business, statistically sixty or seventy percent of that money stays within your local mm-hmm. community. Right? It goes to pave your roads, goes to feed your kids lunch at school. It does all these things, but for, to the tune of like 400, and that's for $50 a month if the 1.8 million people that live in this whole general area of central Pennsylvania mm-hmm. would just support local once per month at a rate of 50 bucks. Mm. It's staggering, you know what I mean? But people just need to be educated on that, and that's... I did see... good stuff. So Ethan yeah. from, uh, Aunt, from Andy's Roofing, so they're doing, they're kind of working that in, they're incentivizing... Mm-hmm them to go to local businesses and leave reviews yeah and then doing the truck in front oh that's good and taking the photo and then they like get a like steve my my partner had a great idea um he was about um like a gift bag whenever we leave a job whenever we're done we want to leave a gift bag but that gift bag is like things to go support other local businesses i like that that's a great idea and i just let that i just let that one out on air shouldn't shouldn't share that's good well uh shout out to steve it was a great idea Maybe it was Moses. I don't know. One of the, one of those two guys that's smarter than me. Also, Moses. I heard Moses came up with the fox. Yeah, is that true? Yeah, it is. The uh, what is his name? If I can be honest, most of the good ideas that come from this place come from Moses, and then I just steal. Well, is it just because he's watching? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what is the fox's name? Fox or Knox. Knox, Knox the, the roofing fox. So- Knox I mean, the he, roofing fox. He does look a little bit like a furry. I'm not gonna lie. Oh shit! And I didn't so, think about that. no, I mean, hey, I I ordered a, a furry costume for myself <laughs> that's gonna be here tomorrow. I'm not I'm not lying. Seriously? It's gonna come in an Amazon. It's just the tail and the ears. Yeah. But you know, that's probably enough to get the furries going. Oh boy. Yeah, yeah, that's enough. <laughs> oh boy. Well, any last words? Since we made the title of "Creating Sales Momentum," anything else that you want to say that's really worked for you? Just think about a, a, a smaller business than you. You two years ago, what, what would have you wanted to know you two years ago um, that would be about sales? Like anything else you could share? Um, if I've learned anything, it's from it's been from Moses actually, and it's sometimes everything doesn't need to be scripted, right? Focus on your customer first before your own pitch. Focus on their wants and their needs and their problems first, and then craft what you give them based off of their answers. And I think that's, you know, mm. understand your, your customer's pain points and be a steward to your customer, right, before you're a salesman. And I think you'd be surprised at even the customers who don't utilize you will, will be a referral machine for you because they appreciated your 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 fervor candor. to your yeah. candor and your fervor to help them yeah i always say uh window shoppers are the best promoters mm-hmm. and like i've heard that a lot from roofers just saying like they said i didn't need a new roof that yeah. feels that feels ethical yeah i mean sometimes there's i i i couldn't i couldn't even count the amount of times that we were called out for a roof replacement and we're like you know you, you don't need to do that right now you can you can probably wait maybe you need a redo maybe you need uh, just a simple repair, but you know we try to do what's best for our customer all the time, and I mean that, that might sound cheesy, but when you put it into practice and stay consistent with it, it's the the amount of the amount of reviews that we have on our Google that are like paragraphs long, I think kind of tell that story. Nobody gives us just a simple the five stars without anything on there. People yesterday somebody wrote paragraphs upon paragraphs of how helpful we were transparent we were we worked with them we found something that worked for them we solved their problems we 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 listen to their issues and then address those issues and we give you pictures and just take care of your customer mm. and I, I think a lot of the rest just falls falls into place love that 
and marketing guy, take what the customers say in the review and use it on your website. <laughs> use, use the things that come out the most and make those the headlines. And what he's, anything else that you'd want to say, uh, you two years ago, be generous. It's a, it's a nationwide audience of young roofers, people that are just getting started. Anyone else, anything else that you'd really suggest there? Be generous with your content. Again, write content for your customers, not for your competitors. Um, answer their questions up front. Tell them you use subcontractors. Trust me, people aren't going to care as much as you think they are. More people will probably celebrate you for cutting through the bullshit than they'll, than they'll uh, put you on trial for telling the truth. You know, mm. um, that's, that's the way I see it, man. Just be honest. Take the, take the mysticism out of all this, right? Just be straight with people. Be straight with your customers and your employees and yourself. <laughs> and that's how you create sales momentum. And that's great advice from Charlie here. Appreciate everyone to watch this now or afterwards and talk later. Bye. Peace.